Margaret Madeline Chase was born December 14, 1897, in Skowhegan, Maine. She was Carrie Murray and George Emery Chase's first child. And my father was a, a, a barber. He was not as active as my mother was, as far as people were concerned. He was quite an attractive man and a, and a busy man, but my mother was uh, here, there, and everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think if she'd had some of the opportunities that I had, she might have done similar things to what I did. Margaret Chase was the oldest of six children, three boys, three girls, and home was the house their grandfather built. It was a very enjoyable, uh, very enjoyable childhood and girlhood. Uh, my father and mother were great believers in having open house for our friends. We could do anything practically we wanted to around the house as long as it was a home. Margaret Chase was an average student. I didn't like history, she said. I liked arithmetic. There were 31 students in the class of 1916. As manager in Roving Center, Margaret Chase led the Skowhegan High School girls basketball team to a state championship. The class yell was Rizzle Dazzle, Frizzle Frazzle, Sis Boom Ba, 1616, Ra Ra Ra. With a loan from her grandfather, she was able to go on the senior class trip to Washington, D.C. She met President Woodrow Wilson and, for the first time, walked the corridors of the nation's capital. I think I was only 12 years old when I went in and applied for a job in the five and ten cent store. The man suggested that I get a, grow a little taller so that I could reach the shelves. Um, later on, perhaps a year later, I went back and asked for a job again. And he let me go in. I uh, worked Saturday evenings. I think I got 50 cents from 6 o'clock to 10. Margaret Chase was a telephone operator when she met Clyde Smith. He was a well-known and successful Maine businessman and politician. He ran for office 48 times in his life and never knew defeat. Margaret Chase and Clyde Smith were married May 1930. She was 32, he was 53. Smith wanted to run for governor, but his friends encouraged him to run for Maine's second district congressional seat in 1936. He was elected, and the Smiths went to Washington. He had worked on labor legislation, compensation, pensions, and that kind of thing through his life. And, uh, but he worked very hard at it, but I was his sort of his right hand, and we worked together. And I was on his payroll. Uh, for three thousand dollars a year, which wasn't very much money. April 8, 1940, Congressman Clyde Smith died unexpectedly from a heart attack. He died. Uh, he died in the early morning. I would think it was it was too late for the papers anyway. So that his statement, calling, uh, uh, advising his people in Maine that uh, he would. Uh, sent it over to me if, if they would elect me, uh, was carried in the press, and his death, which came about the same time, was on radio. And from then on, I had no, no chance of doing anything else. Margaret Chase Smith was an inexhaustible campaigner and always refused campaign contributions. And although she never made a point of seeking political support as a woman, she would say often, women are people. A woman's proper place is everywhere. In 1940, she became the first woman elected for Maine to the United States House of Representatives. Her first important vote was on the draft. She voted yes. She became the first woman ever assigned to the House Naval Affairs Committee. She took a wartime tour of the islands in the South Pacific. And she would always be for a strong defense and a well-trained and well-paid military reserve. She fought to get women regular status in the armed services. I was not the mother of the waves. My great uh, uh, contribution was when the war was over, uh, there was a great move to keep these girls on, uh, but not give them permanent status. And I said that they were either needed or they were not needed. If they were needed, then let's give them full status uh, as the men were, 
and put them into the realistic positions. The rose became her trademark. A friend of mine gave me a lapel uh, pin uh, in the form of a little vase that held water. And I don't wear many uh, ornaments. And I put water in it one day and happened to have some roses and put a rose in it. It looked pretty good. Senator Smith proposed that the rose become America's national flower. And today it is. In 1946, a reporter said to Representative Smith, Margaret, you have reached your peak. You can go no further. The turning point in Smith's career was 1948. She decided to run for the Senate. No woman had ever before served in both houses of Congress. That is until Senator Margaret Chase Smith. I uh, thought that at least I should try or should give it consideration. I. Um, thought I could win if I put all that I had into the campaign, uh, but it was, uh, it was, it just happened. I think there was no great planning for it. Margaret J. Smith was the first woman elected to the United States Senate in her own right and the first to achieve national stature. And in the years that followed, Senator Smith would become known worldwide as her political career spanned the most important years of our history. She was interviewed and photographed more frequently than any other member of Congress. There were dozens of magazine articles and dozens of radio interviews. And tell us, what have you been doing this week, for example, over in the Senate? Uh, the, the hearings uh, have been long. There's so much overlapping and duplication in the government that they think they can save a lot of money. But... There were countless television interviews. Margaret Chase Smith, Republican. Shao Higgins. But about you as a child and as a young lady in Shabogan, if that's the way to pronounce it, I and almost no one else knows what we'd like to know. Won't you tell us who you were and where you came from? Well, you know, it's Skowhegan instead of Sheboygan. <laughs> Sheboygan's Michigan, Skowhegan is Maine. And political cartoonists had a heyday. I had a chin they liked, said Senator Smith. She debated Eleanor Roosevelt on CBS's Face the Nation. We aren't standing with the Kremlin, certainly on the aggression in Hungary. No, but there wouldn't have been an aggression. Early in my career, said Senator Smith, I decided that if I were to do the job, I would have to give it my all, that I could not divide my time between the Capitol and parties. So I seldom left the Capitol when the Senate was in session. I missed much pleasure following this policy, but I think it paid off. She set a record in the Senate by casting 2,941 consecutive votes. Just as she was an inexhaustible campaigner throughout her political career, she was a zealous and committed lawmaker, and her work on three major committees, appropriations, armed services, and government operations, came first. Seems to me like that test. The late Senator John Stennis, a Democrat from Mississippi, worked closely with Senator Smith on the powerful Armed Services Committee. If she thought you were correct in your conclusions, she'd stay with you, whether it's warm or cold weather. <laughs> she was tough. Well, she, she prepared. She knew her lesson, so to speak. And she, uh, she had good judgment. But more than all others, she, uh, other qualities, she felt her obligation and her duty very strongly. A person ceases to be a leader when he or she becomes a follower, doing only that perceived to be popular, said Senator Smith. If I have any quality as a leader, 
It has been the determination to speak my mind in times of crisis, such as in the days of McCarthyism. That, in the words of Stevenson, that is McCarthyism. And oh, that's an awful thing. The senator from Wisconsin, Joseph McCarthy, claimed he had the names of 205 communists working in the State Department. The communist threat was a legitimate issue in America and around the world, and many members of Congress thought McCarthy was on to something. But he began to falsely accuse hundreds of innocent people of disloyalty, from top military officials to college professors. Lives were being ruined. Senator Margaret Chase Smith could stand it no longer. June 1, 1950, she delivered her famous Declaration of Conscience. Now, there was so much suspicion among people. There was so much fear. They were getting to the point where they had to dare, people had to dare to speak their thoughts or their minds for fear of uh, uh, being accused of, uh, of uh, being uh, communists. Many years later, Senator Smith would remember and repeat her powerful words. It is high time that we stopped thinking politically as Republicans and Democrats about elections and started thinking patriotically as Americans about national security. Well, it had a very dramatic effect on Joe McCarthy, due in part because Margaret Smith was so highly regarded as being one who had a conscience and uh, was fearless in terms of expressing her views. If I have any chance of even being a footnote in history, said Senator Smith, it will not be because I was the only woman senator for so many years. Instead, it will be because of my declaration of conscience in 1950 and vigorous opposition to Senator Joseph McCarthy and what was called McCarthyism. Senator Margaret Chase Smith served during the administrations of six presidents. In September 1949, a reporter asked Senator Smith if she was a candidate for vice president. Indeed, I am not, she answered emphatically. She urged the Republican Party to put a woman on the national ticket in 1952. In 1956, she said, I see no reason why a qualified woman who can make a real contribution to the office shouldn't be nominated and elected for vice president or even president. Fifteen years later, January 27, 1964, at the Women's National Press Club in Washington, D.C., Senator Smith made a surprising announcement. So because of these very impelling reasons ag against my running, I have decided that I shall. Elsie Carper was a reporter for the Washington Post. I was assigned as a reporter to, uh, to cover her, uh, her campaign in the, uh, in the New Hampshire uh, primary. And it was, uh, it was one of the most enjoyable campaigns that I ever, uh, ever, ever covered. M maybe uh, one of the most uh, dangerous uh, efforts by a politician that I've ever seen to get a vote. Uh, we, uh, uh, her car uh, uh, went down the road and started out over the ice on the pond. The, the object of this was a, uh, was a fisherman who had cut one of the round holes in the ice and was, uh, was fishing through the ice. And she got out of her car and uh, shook his hand and asked him to vote for her, and I believe he promised to. Senator Margaret Chase Smith is on the ballot too because a lot of Oregon ladies wanted her on. So far as we know, this is a political first, a campaign financed with trading stamps. The eyes of the nation are on San Francisco as the Republican Party convenes to nominate its choice for president. Senator Margaret Chase Smith of Maine receives a warm and sprightly tribute, honor for the first woman to have her name before a major political convention. 
I did go into it sincerely. I had some strong support. I uh, didn't get, I came in second to Goldwater. I think a, a president or a senator or any other public official is about as good as the people he surrounds himself with. And I felt that I had that ability and uh, uh, could do the job with my long experience. I'm sure that uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of other women who have subsequently run for Congress uh, have uh, taken her as an example. She had a good, uh, a good record on civil rights and, and uh, civil liberties. Uh, she, was, uh, she was certainly, she was certainly uh, intelligent. And, uh, I think she would have made a, made, a, made a good president. For 32 and a half years, Margaret Chase Smith represented the people of Maine in Congress. My constituents are my friends, my family, my future. My job is my life, she said. I want to be regarded as a senator, not just a woman senator. Senator Smith never lost an election until 1972. The people, of course, were let down. The next day, they just couldn't understand what had happened. And uh, I think, if I'm real honest, that I was relieved. I don't like to say that because I love being there, but it was time for me to leave. Senator Smith returned to her home in Skowhegan, a place she said she never really left. And for the next 24 years, she worked with young people and created an education center for students where they could learn the value of performing public service and study the important events of the 20th century. Senator Smith and her longtime friend and executive assistant in the Senate, Major General William C. Lewis, Jr., together planned for the Northwood University Margaret Chase Smith Library. It adjoins Senator Smith's home on the banks of the Kennebec River in Skowhegan. Senator Smith said to a group of students once, there is no generation gap between you and me in our thinking. Although she never attended college, Senator Smith was awarded 95 honorary degrees. She was voted one of the 10 most admired women in the world and was repeatedly nominated Woman of the Year. She also received the Presidential Medal of Freedom. No, I have no regrets about anything. <laughs> I would say it was a life of, of uh, great activity, uh, great love of people, and doing for people. Margaret J. Smith died at her home in Skowhegan, May 29, 1995. She was 97. That constructive criticism is not only to be expected, but stop. That smears are not only to be expected, but fought. That honor is to be earned, but not bought. Thank you.